Okay, here is some vector art of a skull in Adobe Illustrator, and you can see it has quite a bit of detail through it. A lot of little cracks and shapes and extra detail above these teeth here and even throughout the teeth. And this entire size is about seven by eight and a half millimeters, so very small. What we're gonna try to do is get good detail marking this in anodized aluminum and then in stainless steel with a 20 watt fiber laser. I've got a digital viewer set up with my little Amazon microscope and that will help us see what detail results from the marking. And I've actually already marked this about, I don't know how many times, but you can kind of see from the video, a lot. So I played with things like hatch spacing, with the speed, with the power, with the frequency, with the angles, with the direction of the pattern, with multiple hatches, and I've kind of settled on a couple things to get results that I like. First off, I wanted to get a good fill so it was heavily covered, but I didn't want to lose any detail, so I also played with contours following the edge, that sort of thing. Different power settings would, would sort of yield different colors, as well as frequencies would yield different colors. And I can, I think I can do three different things in stainless. That's make a white mark, make a brown mark, and make a black mark. And I can retain the detail in every one. And then in aluminum, I can make a gray mark or I can make a white mark. And this is going to be black anodized aluminum. Okay, so this is going to be anodized aluminum. The mark on the left is going to be the gray mark. And the mark on the right is going to be the white mark. Let's light it up, make sure we're in an okay spot. That looks good. Let's go. So the difficult part of marking this is retaining the detail sort of around the nose and throughout the teeth and you can see there are little fractures between the eyes and below the eyes and it's tough to keep those sort of in focus. I found that when I added a contour it got a little bit worse when the power was too high, it got considerably worse when I moved too fast. I set the speed let's say above 500, got considerably worse again, I set the speed too slow, I would end up having kind of a blur of the detail. It would be very filled but the detail would just be lost. If the frequency was too high, oftentimes it didn't fill completely, and the frequency does seem to be what you want to tweak if you want to get the gray mark instead of the white mark. So initially, in the camera, let's give it a little wipe. That's the result. And so you can see the one on the left is kind of grayish, and the one on the right pops pretty well, and it's kind of white. Let's look at it under the little USB microscope, and you can get an idea what detail is there. So ignore the lettering, I didn't focus on that at all, I just quickly hatched it just so I could have some kind of reference if I wanted to see how that mark was made. So this is the one on the right that has 50% power, 400 speed, and this actually has two loops for the pen, so that was one difference. Initially I struggled with that because I thought, well, two loops is going to make it worse. If you don't change the direction or the angle or anything else and you just repeat the exact same loop, you won't lose detail. So you can see I got very good detail in through here, below the eye, above the teeth, around the teeth, and the fractures right between the eyes, and even this detail around the nose. It all looks pretty good. And one area I struggled, right over here, you can see these two little I don't know, lobes coming down from the skull over here and up on the left right there. Those would sometimes not fill in if I had the power settings wrong or if I had the hatch settings wrong. So I settled on a hatch of 0.025 millimeters. I tried less, I tried more, I tried significantly more, and this is kind of what works the best. So you can see it pops pretty well, it's quite white, and you can see almost all of the detail. So I'm pretty happy with those settings. Now the one thing I did change is the pattern is a unidirectional pattern. That means starting from left to right, left to right, left to right. I first tried the bidirectional pattern that goes um, left to right, then right to left, and does, does not connect vertically. And that worked pretty well, but I found that it's, it's very similar, but this is maybe slightly better. It takes probably a little bit longer, but it looks slightly better. So on the gray mark, you can see the fill is a little bit uneven. I didn't play with this a ton because I really prefer the white mark. But if you wanted a gray mark, basically just increase the frequency and drop the speed a little bit, and you, that'll turn out gray. So it's kind of a neat mark. We don't lose... Let me see if I can focus a little better. So you still have the detail. It's tough to see since it is gray on black. But you can see the detail is still there. I would probably need to tweak these settings a little more, but this is not my goal to get a gray mark, but it does look kind of neat. So, I'm happy with those in aluminum. Let's do the same mark, but let's tweak the settings so we can get good detail on stainless and get our three different results. So the first result we're gonna go for is the white mark, the second is the brown mark, and the third is the black mark. 
So the major difference in the marks is one frequency, two speed, and three power, which I guess is everything, almost. So for the white mark, we're gonna do a quicker mark. It's gonna be 200 speed, 20% power, 25 kilohertz frequency, and our hatch is gonna be 0 0.05. For the brown mark, that's pretty much, you can do whatever you want in stainless. It's gonna turn brown if you use too much power, you go too fast, you do anything, it'll turn brown. So it's not really the most desirable mark, but it is a result you can get, so I'm gonna do it anyway. The black mark, a lot of people want that, so that's more of an anneal. It's going to be much slower, let's say less than 100 millimeters per second, less than 10% power, and a higher frequency, and a much, much tighter hatch. So anything below 0.01 millimeters is going to get you a black mark. So that's going to be a slow mark, but it will turn out black. So let's do all three of those at once, and I'm going to mark this entire thing up here. Let's reset our focus. That looks okay. All right, let's light it, make sure we're okay with that. That looks fine, and let's give it a go. So this last one is the black mark, and you're seeing the downside of it right now. It comes out real nice, great detail, but it is slow. And you could probably get blacker than what I'm doing right now and actually take more time, but for the sake of keeping this relatively short, we're just going to use the settings that I already put up on the screen. And I don't know how durable the black mark is. It's basically a surface mark. It, there's no depth to it because it's done at such a low power. So I'm not sure how long it would take, let's say, to rub the mark off. But I mean, it's, it's relatively durable. It's not like you can brush it off with your hand or anything. All right, that's it. So let's give it a quick dust off. You can see the one in the center in the camera initially looks kind of dark, but it is a brown. The one on the left is pretty definitively white, and the one on the right looks pretty black. So I think we got the result we were looking for. Probably could tweak those a little bit, but stainless isn't really the goal here, so... I'm going to put these under the viewer. Let's see if we can get a decent look at these. That looks pretty good. Okay, so the one on the left that we're looking at right now is actually the white mark. So you can see the detail on that looks very good. And the detail to the eye also looks very good. The one in the center is the brown mark, so the power is probably pretty darn high in that, and you can kind of see it's a little bit toasted looking. The one on the right is sort of our black and neal, so it's the real low power setting and slow. And that looks pretty good to the eye. It looks very dark. The detail is pretty crisp. It looks good. Probably could spend a little more time on that one, maybe mark it a little bit slower. But that's okay. It looks good. It's kind of a shiny black. Okay, there's one more thing I wanted to do here, and that's this last skull on the top right. This is going to be on stainless steel, and what I want to do here is start with my brown mark. So the second skull, if you recall, has 250 millimeters per second, 50% power, and 25 gigahertz frequency, resulting in a brown mark, as you can see in the center here on this piece of stainless. So what I want to do is come back, essentially with the white mark settings of the first skull in a second hatch, and I'm going to use everything exactly the same. And let me see if I can pull up these hatch settings. So you can see the first pass is the exact same as mark number... Wait, what's going on? Oh, I'm on hatch two. Okay, so mark number two here has the exact same settings for our first pass on this last mark. And if I go to hatch two, you can see that I'm using the settings from the first white mark. So I'm doing this at a 45 degree angle instead of a 30 degree angle, but I've, other than that, everything is exactly the same as this first mark. So what I want to do here is see if I can turn a brown mark white. So I'm going to select all of this here, light it up, and we'll just put it right next to everything. Yeah, let's put it underneath. Stop it, and let's click mark. So all done, let's initially look at it before we wipe it off. So we've got a little bit of a round smudge there. Let's see how that comes out. A little bit of, some hint of brown, I think. Let's take it to the viewer and see how the detail turned out. 
does anything show up since it's brown? Well, it's dark, it's hard to see. The detail looks pretty good. I can see quite a bit. The mark is not quite as white as the first mark. It's a little bit silverish. You can sort of see, here's the white mark. This is the repeat with the brown and then the white mark. Slightly silverish, but significantly lighter than that brown mark. So I guess you can run a cleanup pass and make your mark white after it's brown.